Hey guys, this is David, the Georgia photographer, and I have done a live stream. Here it is, uh, Sunday afternoon, it's August 11th, 2019. The reason I marked the date is because I still am shooting some film from time to time. And if you, if you follow my channel, you know I'm pretty heavy with Nikon equipment and Fuji cameras now i've picked up a fuji camera and i'm i love to take digital photos with those cameras with the advent of digital photography i grew up in film and once digital photography became mainstream in about 2006 2007 ish i sold all my film gear i had a whole bunch of i had a yashica film camera that was a pretty nice old film camera and hey jacob Thanks for logging in. I've kind of somehow reversed my setup and now all the comments are over here. So I'll be looking back and forth between the camera and the comments. <laughs> but, but yeah, this, um, this is, uh, where was I at? The, I'm catching up on my brain. The thoughts that I had was, Oh look, now the wind's gonna start blowing. It's probably making a big sound on the mic. Let's see if I do this, maybe it'll break some of that off. But I was I was really heavily invested in a Yashica camera system I had, and it took beautiful photos, and I used it for about 15 years. It ran great for me. I didn't have any trouble with it. It's just that it was film, and film at the time was really slowing down my progress and my businesses and everything else. But because of the whole developing time. And at the time, you could still get one hour development. You could go to Revco and uh, Walmart. Several places had one hour development. You know, they had a machine on site. They'd put the film in and it would process it and spit out four by six prints. Oh, come on. That's it. All right, Jacob, you're going to have to tell me is there a bunch of wind noise? If there is, I'm going to have to relocate indoors. Because <laughs> this is pretty windy now. There was no wind, guys, until I came outside and set up the camera. Yeah, I was afraid of that. All right. I have a simple solution to this problem. <laughs> I get my film bag. How do we relocate to where there ain't no wind? There is an air conditioner, but I can do with that sound. We'll just go right here. Yeah. As soon as I sit down here, whoop, right, get the illumination figured out. There we go. Hmm. Get you guys up high enough to where it don't look like I'm looking down on you. <laughs> but there, now it's a little bit shaky because I'm holding the camera. I'm I'm scouring the terrain for a functional device to hold the camera at the right angle. <laughs> ah, let's see here. Necessity is the mother of invention. This is the problem with live streams. Ah, this may just work. Hey, look at that. All right, if I sit down nice and gently, move my camera bag out of the way. Look at there. <laughs> Problem solved. Now, whew. yeah, but what I was saying was, was that um, with my, see, I take one of the caps off when I switch films. <laughs> Digital problems when the subject is analog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Isn't that the truth? <laughs> oh, I can't put my elbow on the table either. It shakes the camera. <laughs> you couldn't do this with film. That's true, so. <laughs> the, but the whole point was, was at the time, film was a real nuisance to me, and I was trying to move faster in the world, and, you know, we were, we were building a website, and I wanted to put those photos I captured right then, straight on the website, in a hurry. Hey, Eric, how you doing? Thank you for logging in. I appreciate it. Thank you for letting me know you're here. That... And it was just a big headache to do it with film. I just, 
I had a real problem with it getting getting the CD at the time of your images back from Revco or whoever so you could take those and put them on on the computer and get them on the internet so I broke down and bought a little Fuji film fine picks uh, fixed lens camera it's one of them little um, I classify them as a consumer camera it's uh, I don't remember the apertures and such, but it's got a little mechanical zoom on it. It even has the W and T, the wide angle telephoto buttons like the old video cameras used to have. I believe it even has those for your zoom. And, uh, um, but it took, it took reasonably good photos. Ah, Aunt Donna, thank you for logging in. <laughs> but that, uh, but that was that was a real inconvenience at the time so we got that digital camera we started grabbing some frames started using them to build the website it was super convenient so much so that i sold all the film camera gear at the time and bought basically a, a couple of those little digital point and shoots i don't know i ain't seen him yet I texted him to see if he was going to join us, and he never wrote me back. I'm not sure what he's doing. He may be out trying to capture photos of birds in flight. I seen where he uh, had posted a comment on Steve Perry's uh, YouTube channel about uh, whether or not the mirrorless Nikon cameras would handle bird in flight work, and Steve Perry basically said, you know, yeah, you can do it, but I can also drive a nail with a wrench. Doesn't mean it works well. <laughs> so he may be out shooting pictures. I'm not real sure. But, you know, I kind of got to where I was missing it. <laughs> and I missed the whole, the whole process of film. Once you, since I grew up with film, it was, you know, I understood... I understood how you used it. You know, you don't just go out and just fire frames willy-nilly like you can with a digital camera. Because that is kind of liberating. When you get, you know, when you get a memory card and you plug it in the camera and it tells you you have, you know, 685 frames or whatever, that's a huge roll of film in, in a film photographer's mind. And you can, you know, you can waste a few. And so... It got me, it kind of made me lazy on my composition, you know. You don't, you have to actually, you didn't have to think about it. Wow, that's vibrating a lot. But, <laughs> ran a roll through the old F2 this weekend. Yeah, I got this one out and I fired a few more with it. That's what I was going to look at was, yeah, I'm on frame 19 on this roll. So, <laughs> working on processing this roll through. But yeah, yeah, I got this X700 for a song. It had the 50 millimeter F2, and that was the reason I bought it. I wanted the lens mainly to do a lens review, and it was local here in Chattanooga. But right now, I've got a 45 millimeter F something, F2, yeah, 45 millimeter F2 on it currently. Touch, wider angle, but it's a little more compact and small. I mean, the footprint on it is nothing. And that's including the UV filter. So yeah, this is a, this is a beautiful little system. This, this particular body runs program mode, and program mode will set the shutter speed and the aperture to get you the best exposure possible as far as the camera is concerned. So it has this function on it where you have this particular lens is missing it. I can't show you really because it has a switch that you run the aperture ring around and flip a switch, and when you do, it locks it in, I think it's the... Yeah, I think it's minimum. That way it can control aperture, you know, and it can stop it down. I believe this one here might do it. It looks like it will. Yeah, I believe it runs all the way stop down and, you, and then the camera opens it, I believe is what happens. But I don't remember for sure. I'd have to look again. I don't use the program mode. I'm running aperture priority so I can actually control because this is my only way of controlling light since I can't control ISO. <laughs> That's something that I, that I learned to work around quickly with digital photography as well was that you can, 
you can uh, basically change film from frame to frame to frame. You know, with an ISO dial, you literally have whatever size film you need at that moment. The first time. Yeah, they, didn't they buy Minolta? Don't they own, isn't that where the Alpha system came from? It was from the Minolta family? The first lenses were Minolta designs, what Long Rider just wrote in and said. I'm, I want to say I remember something about that because it was Konica Minolta to start with, and then, yeah, the A mount was a Minolta mount, yeah. And then they wanted a little bit bigger mount system, so they went with the E mount and gave them a little more size. But their first cameras were all A mount cameras, yeah. That didn't cause many problems for them. <laughs> yeah, let's see here. Let me set my focus back somewhere in the middle. I try to leave it kind of hyper focal distance to somewhere around f8 and set it to about seven feet in the middle of the range. That would give me about five to ten feet focus, you know. And then you can kind of get a quick snapshot with it. But I have yet to run anything with a flash into the hot shoe. I don't. I don't even. I haven't even bothered. I've just been shooting it native. Yeah, I know. Long Rider said a lot of people um, love the A mount systems and all the bodies that went with them. Like, what was it? The A eighty six wasn't that one of them? I seem, I seem to remember. But they were they were really nice cameras. They took really really nice photos. The first uh, let me think first big photo shoot I did down in Florida with a guy. He was running Sony Alpha cameras. Yeah, they just kind of moved away from them altogether. They just walked away. Yeah, that's true. That, you know, you don't even hear anything about the A-mounts now. They just, like you said, they've gone the way of the dodo bird. And they've basically started to become a collector's item because of that. It's kind of interesting to see how that happened. But they, I think they needed the, I think they needed the larger mount to be able to move towards the full frame mirrorless. I don't think they could get the mount. I don't think they could get the light through an A-mount opening to expose a full frame sensor and that forced them to the E-mount because even though the first E-mount cameras were crop sensor, I believe they had, they had that intention mapped out down the timeline anyway. There was no choice, you know, they they like, we got to go to this larger opening so we can get more light through there because they want that big glass. And then they also wanted those big sensors. <laughs> yeah. That's the way it works sometimes. You just do what you have to do. But with my, with my digital photography going like it has been, I got to where I missed the, the whole a aesthetic of, of putting a roll of film in the camera. And if you watch the the photo walk vlog where me and Grant went on a, went on a little um, street photography photo walk in Chattanooga, one of the photos he took was me changing a roll of film in this camera. And that's because I shot this camera until we got down to the Moxie Hotel and that's when I finished that roll of film. And I switched rolls of film and then I put the camera away and I got out my digital camera and ran it the rest of the day. But there's something, there's something about putting film in the camera and knowing that you only have 24 or whatever, 36 frames, I don't even know how many is on these rolls. This one, this is 36 exposure, but this is a uh, foam pan. These are 24 exposure rolls, yeah. But you always put your little card cap on the back of the camera so you know what's in it. <laughs> this is 400 speed, 24 exposure. <laughs> but this, this just kind of harkens back to a film shooter. I mean, it's just fun, and it doesn't weigh anything. I mean, when you watch when you watch the John Free um, street photography videos, he's got. I think he shoots a Nikon F2, and a lot of times, or an F3. It's a Nikon. I believe it's an F2. But you know, he's he's memorized what shade and what sun work with the film he shoots. So he don't even need a light meter. He just knows, you know, this f-stop for the bright sun, this f-stop for shade, and he just goes. And 
it works and it works for him he gets good photos but you know this is all he's got it's small what's with the oddball stream times today was because yesterday was because i had a few minutes and i just wanted to log in and mess around today is because i have about an hour of free time this weekend's messing with me um tonight we're not going to be home till later so it, when i was normally run my stream in the evenings i would i'm not there today to do it it's kind of this this weekend has been kind of chaotic sorry i was out walking just got home ah good glad to hear you getting your exercise that's a that's a good thing yeah i'm just i have a window of time and i figured i'd fire up the stream while i had time i tried to reach out to bass angler and see if he wanted to join us but he never answered me but yeah i was shooting i was shooting the minolta today and trying to get some frames i got uh, i believe i got some interesting ones of a little girl who had her face painted she was nestled down in the corner reading a book or something she was looking at me um, there's a couple on here i got today there's a, a street performer that was playing a guitar and a drum and a tambourine and he had two of those bells like you ring in a hotel but they were two different pitches and he was using them like cymbals almost and he was he was playing pretty compelling music actually it was really good music and all by himself his bass drum was built into like a suitcase and he had the foot pedal rigged up backwards and he was he was making the he was tripping the bass drum with his heel you know so as he'd bob his heel to, to mark time he'd thump the bass drum it was pretty cool it worked really well i got a, a couple of frames of him but i'm trying to work my way through this roll of film <laughs> but it's you know that was one of the points i was making about film photography is you just don't go out and blast away frames at everything that might be a good image because you only get, you know, this one's only got 24 in it. So you you want to try and get as good of a composition as possible or as interesting of a photo as possible so that you spend that frame of film on something that's worthy of it. You don't want to just fire away because you've got a delete button. You know, some people do, you know, the guys that run the motors, the motor winders and, you know, 120 frame rolls, whatever one of them, them bigger canisters was where they were trying to do sports and action photography back in the 80s. And you see a couple of street photographers put them big motorized mech assemblies on their camera to, to fire burst photos in the street. I'm not, I'm not doing all that. You know, <laughs> it's kind of the point is, to teach yourself to to see a composition and to look for the compelling story, you know, to find something in the composition that's interesting that would draw in a viewer to look deeper. You know, maybe it's got maybe it's got multiple multiple layers of a story or multiple elements that come together that tell a story. Things that things that you know that. A, upon initial viewing may not show up but after they look at it for a few minutes maybe it comes forward then you know lots of, there's just there's there's a lot more to it so i find myself taking a lot less photos and spending more time just watching the world around me to try and find something interesting to photograph it's it's a different mindset it really is now I know Maxim shoots film, but what about the rest of you? And I know Long Rider shoots Sony, so he probably don't shoot film. He probably doesn't even know what film looks like. <laughs> Not sure who all's in here at this point. Not really sure if there is anybody in here at this point. <laughs> Man. That window is way overexposed, and it's a closed blind. That's blinds, <laughs> of course. I used to shoot film and custom print it for 25 some years. Right, and now, 
I think Jacob was the, was the fella. Oops. Whoa, 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 whoa. Go back. Go back. Jacob was the one, wasn't that, that run some film through his F2? Or who am I looking for? Yeah, uh, Eric did. Eric's got the F2. That's who it is. Ah. An AE1. I played with a Canon AE1 for a little while. It's an interesting camera. The, the real... Uh, the neighbors are waving somebody over. <laughs> I thought they were waving at me. But I think they're talking to somebody outside. Um, I don't remember if the one I messed with was an AE-1 or an AE-1 program. I don't remember. I remember it was... I didn't have to do a lot of mathematics to be able to get a proper exposure, so I might have had the program where it done where it set the aperture for me. That's entirely plausible because it's been 15 or 20 years since I used that camera. That's a friend of mine has that one, and his dad used it for a number of years as a insurance adjuster, and he took like storm damage photos. He worked hurricanes down in the, on the Gulf Coast. Wow, Jacob, you're just running, ooh, medium format on a Roly. Well, even if it's a knockoff brand, um, Roloflex and square prints. Is that 60 millimeter by 60 millimeter frames? Isn't that what those are? They're square, aren't they? I believe it is. It's six centimeter by six centimeter negatives. They're pretty big negatives. <laughs> Crap, man. Did it take interest in photos? That's what matters. If it took good photos, doesn't matter. Yes, yeah, squared, yeah. Would it take Roloflex lenses? Or was it the, um, the, that's a twin lens reflex. It has the lenses built in, doesn't it? Yeah, that's not a, that's not like a Hasselblad, yeah. Well, if it took good photos, doesn't matter if it's a crap brand, as long as it worked good. Yeah, it's twin lens, that's what I thought it was. <clears throat> I've never, I've never shot photos with one i've held one and looked through the top viewfinder down and out you know you look down and out the front i've done that and messed with it a little bit but um, i didn't i didn't fire a shutter or anything i just looked through the viewfinder it was a really interesting experience to see it like that 4.4 so-called medium format digital the shutter release button never fell off from a roll of legs <laughs> That's, I think that's taking a small step at the GFX 100. <laughs> well, the shutter button falling off of, of a brand new $10,000 camera. <laughs> You'll like it. Yeah. I know. I, I've shot 120 film, but re-spooled on the 620 spools. I've got a little um, Kodak Brownie. Shoot 620 film. And it's nothing but 120 on a smaller spool. So you, we would literally go in the bathroom, hang a blanket over the door, and spool it off the 120 spool, and roll it back up on a 620 spool. So and then go ahead and load it in the camera, all in the dark. Get it all put together and slide it in the case. And then we went and shot photos. I think it holds. I think it'll take eight frames on a standard roll of 120 film because it's a. It's a it's a rectangular negative. I don't remember the exact size. But yeah. <laughs> Chris Hall family truckster. I forgot about that stupid car. The one with all the headlights. With a so called thirty three by forty four millimeter sensor. <laughs> Agva click. Was that a thing in the USA? Uh-uh. Well, if it was, I wasn't. I wasn't very well versed in the in in medium format cameras until lately. Now nowadays, I've I've started looking at them some, but not beforehand. What time, Sierra? What time do we leave? I don't know. Okay, because it could be four or four thirty. Okay. I was making sure. Go ahead. Yeah, let's see here. Reminds me of the, but the Agva, 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 
makes film, if I remember right. They were they were pretty big with film back in in the states, but then they make pan pan f or pan agfa pan something like that. I believe they made a film that I saw. As far as it goes down the road, yeah, yeah. Somebody and somebody had a video about. Yeah, I thought they made film as well. Isopan, that was what it was called. Yeah. 25, 100, and 400. I shot some, uh, who's brand, what brand was it? I shot some 25 ISO um, 120 film in that little Kodak Brownie, messing around with it. I got a roll off of eBay. I don't remember even who makes it now. I want to say it, it's a Japanese brand. Uh, it might have been Ilford, but I want to say it was a Japanese brand. I bought a few rod rolls of, of film off of eBay before I bought all that uh, film from these guys. Was it uh, Foma? Foma sells a bunch of film on eBay, and you can buy it direct from them on there. So I bought a bunch of 120 film from them. You back? Yeah. All right. But I found 100 speed film worked pretty good in that little brownie. It uh, it gave me the because you got you got like a F16 and an F22 is your only two shutters because it's just a metal plate that moves back and forth with two little tiny holes drilled in it. And then you have one shutter speed. And I think it was right at 130th of a second was the shutter speed somewhere in that neighborhood. It was it was fairly slow shutter. So you needed. You needed a decent amount of light to, to get a decent exposure. And we played with a light meter. I had I bought a couple of light meters because you can buy them for ten bucks, you know, older ones. And one I bought runs straight off of what is it, selenium or whatever the the element is that makes it work. And the other one has a battery, and it, it used some kind of coin cell. We stuck a battery and it come right on. But we did a lot of uh, that trying to meter the light and figure it out but it worked out it just basically had to be in the sun he couldn't take photos in the shade and that's what it boiled down to but we tried 400 speed and the shutter speed you had to be in um you had to be in the shade for 400 speed to work because if it's in the direct sun with 400 it would overexpose it a lot but yeah 100 seemed to be the happy medium for that one Selenium sulfide, yeah, I thought it was selenium. It's been a while since I've seen that. <laughs> but I'll tell you, if I bought a $10,000 digital camera and the shutter lock fell off of it, I would be upset too. I seen a YouTube video by somebody who was saying that they would just pry off the broken lock button and go back to shooting photos I find it hard. I find it a little bit difficult to believe that they would do that because when you drop ten big on a camera body, you expect it to work. I mean, there is a so there is a there is a clause known as reasonable expectations, and a reasonable expectation of a ten thousand dollar camera is that the dadgum shutter lock won't fall off of it within a week of buying it. That's a reasonable expectation. Any judge in any court will agree with you on that, you know? I mean, I would take it straight back and tell them I want another one. <laughs> I mean, that's just not... You now, you know, if you bought a, a $60 camera nowadays, it would probably be fine. <laughs> that's Yeah, that, that would bug me. I would have a problem with that. Let's see, I've seen some stuff happen here. Veracrone Pan ADA-125 for box cameras. The greatest black and white film ever made other than super double x pan really huh asa 125 that's an odd film speed isn't it i'd like to see it you'll see this is tri-x i believe yeah my next film is going to be 400 speed tri-x that's what's going in after this foma pan gets run out i've got two rolls of it in the bag i think yeah 400 tri-x I got this, I don't remember where, but it's black and white film. These are 36 exposure rolls. Got a little bit of a little bit of breathing room with them. Ooh, 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 slow down, slow down now. 
<laughs> Fujifilm shutter buttons never fall off in Kentucky. <laughs> Nor are they spoken of there. <laughs> yeah. Fortunately, the one that's down here in Georgia with me has worked fine so far. I haven't had any trouble with my shutter lock on mine either. <laughs> then again, mine literally came from the X-T1 and it worked you know, and they put it on the two and the three. It's the same shutter lock on all three of them cameras. So that one's not an issue. It's apparently it's, they should have used it on the GFX. <laughs> uh, what is here? Yeah, um, currently, currently I'm doing everything that, that you gave me all that. I wrote all that down and put it in the bag here with the camera, which is rate it for fit, rate it for half the ISO and then reduce the development time 25%. So yeah. And you said it went for all black and white film, not just, not just what I'm shooting, but all of it. So yeah, I've been listening. Yeah, all of it. Yeah, I thought I could. I could have swore you said that. But that that little boss camera is a lot of fun. You know, it's got you know, it's waist level viewfinder design. You hold, you look down into it. You hold it like this. You know, you can either. And it's got two little windows, one for portrait and one for landscape photos. And it shoots. They call it a contact negative, is what they classify it as. But it's a large format negative, and it's it's wider than it is tall. I don't remember the footprint. It's like maybe a 60 by 100 or a 60 by 90 or something like that. But it's a rectangular image it's capturing. And I just don't remember. But you only get eight frames on a roll of 120 film. That's how big the negatives are. Six by nine, yeah, 60 by 90 millimeter. I believe that's what it is. Because it is, it's not square. It's, it's rectangle and it's... 60 millimeters tall seems about right. It's the width of the negative. I, um, and I kind of like using it. It's a fun little camera. It's just that it takes that silly 620 spool and to buy 620 film is cost prohibitive. You know, 120 film is still available and cheap. You can get it. It's just, it's a headache to have to spool that film off in the dark, re-roll it back in on the other spool, you know. That's the only thing that stops me from using that little camera more. Really? I thought about looking at this one to see what it would take to get to get 120 spools in it because it all is a stamped sheet metal. I thought I could mod, either mod the spools or mod the camera slightly. Yeah. I gave 15 bucks for it. <laughs> it does have good viewfinders. They're not busted. And the, um, I took it, I took the front of the camera completely apart and cleaned all of the cigarette smoke off of all the lenses. And it, uh, it went from looking through a foggy yellow viewfinder to clear and bright. It's still got good bright viewfinders. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he, um, Jacob's talking about writing all the information about it on the film. And uh, definitely, yeah, I've got the notes. Like the film canisters, I put, I put all the information in the canisters and keep it with them so that it's all in there. And that way I can keep up with what's going on with each roll I use. The first couple of rolls I shot was before I got, I got my note from Maxim. So they're shot at rate and uh, normal normal settings on the camera so i'm gonna i'm gonna put them in two different ziploc bags and put notes in the bags you know this is rated for this this is rated normal whatever do y'all have a developer y'all prefer because i don't really have a developer yet that i have settled on i was gonna do it at home but i've decided to try and get someone who has has been doing it more because I don't have a scanner either, and I'm gonna have to have somebody scan them. I don't, I don't have any of that equipment. I was gonna try and find, and I, well, I did do some on a flatbed scanner, but the DPI is too coarse, and the images just, I could only view them as thumbnails, you know. 
I couldn't get any resolution out of them. I, you need them scanned at, you know, a thousand, two thousand DPI at least to make a, a even a reasonably sized print. Yeah. Maxim mixed his own film developers. If um, if you guys don't know, Maxim was actually he actually invented developers in in the industry back in the day. Is it time to go? Okay. Yeah. There is no so-called universal developer, despite the claims people make for decent, which was the developer I was using. It worked really well for that for that 120 panel. We had real good results with the 120 film, uh, FOMA, it's FOMA Pan 100 or 200, FOMA Pan 100, I'm sorry. Yeah, it, D76 worked great for it. I actually got that film developer from Amazon. Well, I just got the word guys from the wife that it's time to go. We're gonna, we're going out to eat for supper today and it's, uh, it's been 36 minutes on this live stream, but hopefully next week things will calm down a little bit and, and it'll kind of go back to a pseudo normal schedule and we'll be back on board with normal operations. But I appreciate you guys logging in and get your camera out and go take some pictures with it. I think Maxim did earlier today. So <laughs> with that, I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see y'all later. All right. Bye-bye.